Hey everybody, welcome back to this old trike. Tonight I've put in some uh, some hours, some burning the midnight oil here, and I've been organizing. Before I get too much further, I want to show you what we've done, and uh, I'm, I'm excited. So take a look. So, as you may recall, this is my parts nook, I guess, or whatever you want to refer to it as. This was a hole, and still is kind of disorganized, but we're getting there. My spare parts inventory that I, I'm trying to organize. So I've got lots of totes like this. I bought a bunch, so they match, so I can stack them. They come in a couple different sizes, small, medium, and large. These are the small and mediums here. As you can see, I've got miscellaneous new parts. We've got carb parts, levers, bearings and seals, brake parts, electrical components, rubber pieces. Parts based on the machine they go to. Tire repair, seat brakes, speedometers have their own bin. One of these boxes has a, a new old stock bearing in it. And one has, I think, two racks, front racks for 200S or 185S. But a lot of what was sprinkled throughout this shelf has been allocated to a bin, so I can pull it down as needed. I've emptied out all of these, which I wasn't utilizing very well. But I think what my vision is here is to put a shelf in the middle, not as deep, maybe just enough to, to have those those on it all the way across. Enough parts in there. The, the problem with that, an open bin, is dust will settle in there. So just making this up as I go along. Some miscellaneous fenders, there's uh, tire tubes in there, 350X tank. There's a 300 kit for a first and second gen 250R. You know, there's a bunch of 250R parts in that tote. This tote has a bunch of 350X parts. I don't remember what's in the tote that's behind this. So it's been fun to rediscover things and group things up. You know, from different times, you'll put things on the shelf and you'll clump things together and then doing a big a big uh, overhaul of everything allows you to get into everything you need to. This is headlight guards and lenses and bezels. Oh my. There's another fairing just hanging out. They're hard to store when they're not in a box. But that's it for now. I'm going to go to bed for now and uh, hit this again probably tomorrow. Maybe give it a rest for a day. It, uh, it's it been neat and motivating to, to do what I've done. So I, I want to keep going while I'm still motivated and make it happen. And I'll keep posted. So I just want to give an update on where we stand with my organizational exercise here so the shelves are looking a lot better i bought some some more containers so i could line them up down here you know various things like headlights and headlight guards and 350x parts and 250r parts and i've got two totes worth of tubes for tires even though i don't really like using them i have made some moves of stuff in the shop just so I could have room to think. You know, sometimes you need room to think. And here's what I think. These shelves, and just to recap, if you hadn't seen my other video, I built these shelves to store wood and woodworking materials. And the shelves used to go all the way across. So there was no nook, no U-shaped set of shelves there. 
it was just you know eight foot three quarters of an inch between these posts so i could slide a full sheet of whatever four by eight material that i wanted to in between the posts and i could have organization and it was going to be great and then i had a three-wheeler renaissance where i remembered how much i love three-wheelers and this is where we're at so the shelves are underutilized for a woodworking shop and this isn't really a woodworking shop at the minute at best it's a woodworking slash three-wheeler shop so we are dealing with that but i'm i'm more working on three-wheelers and doing woodworking stuff as as needed so i'm trying to make it function for both that's why these shelves are like they are and what i think i'm going to do is clear out everything that's on these shelves take the tv down take my spare tanks down start pulling out the materials and stuff that are in these shelves to make a, an l-shaped set of shelves in there you know this post will become like a, a peninsula of shelves around around it i'll have this shelf across the top which i never even finished if you notice that so i'll need to figure that out but this will allow me to take my toolbox which i like this setup i gotta clean off that table before i get going but i like that setup having my toolbox with a work surface right next to it so by doing an l-shaped nook here i'll open up wall space that i can put my toolbox on and i can roll my work surface over here as needed that's the idea at least but my plan right now is to play some trike tetris open up these doors take the this 90 i'm working on my 250r i'll probably just throw a cover over my 350x take the uh the few machines that are back there get them in to this area so they are away from the dust away from the chaos try to condense what's left in the shop over to the side so i can have this whole bay as a staging area for the things i'm going to be pulling off this shelf and and then i can get into it that's the plan the uh challenges that i foresee are that my heater which runs on propane i have a flex line to some iron pipe right there that goes through the wall of course you're not gonna be able to see it all the way back there but i, I put that in there i think that's a five foot stick that i ran through the wall i'm gonna have to reroute that and it is chilly out so that will be the challenge for today but i'm excited i have more stuff than just this so even if i got that organized i've got stuff in the other room you've probably seen pictures of that that i want to pull in here and be able to organize it in a heated space where i work on it and not have to go on a mission to pull things out so that's what we're doing. Stay tuned for updates, and let's get to work. Okay. A little status update. We've been working. I just bumped into something behind me. But you can see the shelves are getting emptied out. This, uh, this shelf was not original to when I built things. I needed a kind of an intermediary one, and I think I only built that about two years ago to help organize stuff. I've pulled off everything from that section. All the tanks have been relocated into the other room here, which you guys are probably familiar with the other room. All the trikes are from the shop have been moved in there. All the gas tanks are over there on the pool table. We've got another set of hands in the shop. What do you think of the progress we're making, Palin? It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. What's the craziest part? The fact that like, it's been two hours and we've already done it. So you're just because sometimes it's a little quiet. I notice on the video you said it's crazy that it's only been two hours. I don't even think it's been two hours. Oh, yes. yeah. And I've done all this. So, you know, just to keep it real with everybody, you know, I think we all have a tendency sometimes to hoard stuff. So, for instance, this is 
pressure treated wood and leftovers from the deck I put on my old house in 2009. And, you know, I didn't keep everything, but I kept what was possibly good for something down the road. You know how it is. So that's, you know, some long deck boards there. So that's what that is. And this, what was up on this shelf is all hidden behind here. These were old pieces of cabinet that were from either the kitchen cabinets in the house I live in now from when I was a kid or leftover remnants from what was my grandparents' cabinets because they were all the same thing and my sister was renovating that house, what was my grandparents' house at the same time. So I, they all look like this. It's all that material. So I kept everything just in case I needed to patch pieces in. These are leftover cutoffs and remnants from siding from my house when we redid that. So my thought process is none of these things need to be stored in here where it's warm. And this space could be used a lot more efficiently for parts and things that I do need as I work on machines. And all that OSB down there, I bought that when it was cheap a long time ago, so I'm glad I did that. But that was for the walls and for the ceiling in here, which I never finished. But I'm glad I didn't because on the ceiling, we're going to put white metal roofing material, steel. And that'll keep it bright in here. And I think that's our update for now. Yeah. You going to get to work, Kaylin? Yeah. All right. Pull all that OSB out. All right. <laughs> Over and out. All right, we've got everything unloaded. The OSB off the floor. Starting to see what the space is going to look like, and I like it. I'm, I'm pleased with this. So the next couple moments, we got to decide. I think I'm going to mirror this width. And then go back and mirror the, the depth of that shelf across this back. Draw some lines. Make some cuts. And I might have to run to the hardware store to get some new pipe. I'll also be thinking about where that pipe is going to run. So I can have my heater hooked up. And where that's going to reside. What do you think, Palin? I think yes. You think yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Well, we're going to get to thinking. All right. So this is the next day. We're just getting out here. We left things yesterday. We rerouted the, the propane. So now this will reside over in this area. I started to cut things away. I cut the middle shelf out. I got a piece in a, another support next to the propane. But this will be cut here. That will be cut there. The tool chest will reside on this wall. We'll have shelves like this over on this area. And then we've got the mess that we've created. All these pieces of plywood. There's the girl. Oh, nice hat. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to move all these plywood pieces. This is old siding cutoffs from my house that I'm keeping for some reason. I don't know. And I've got some other full sheets of maple or birch plywood. Uh, I'll probably find a home for that in here on the other shelves once I get my toolbox moved. But I need a pathway out because I'm going to be taking my 350X out today after I swap some sprockets. And we're going to experiment with how fast we can go just by changing gearing. So stay tuned for that. Look for that video. I'm not sure which will come out first. But we're going to move some wood. Are you going to help? Yes. Perfect. Here we go.
So here we are. It's been, how long has it been, Palin? A couple hours? Maybe a couple hours. And we have made our cuts. I've reframed what will be the back shelf here. This one's a little wider so I can fit totes underneath it. These will have pieces run that way. So this will be kind of a peninsula type shelf for our little L-shaped nook where I've got my toolbox position now. I like that. I'll probably position my work table here on wheels. It might make it too tight to get around that. So that's to be determined. But once I frame the rest of those shelves, we'll probably wrap it up. I've made another mess of the shelf. Palin's here. You watching yourself on the TV? Oh my gosh. You gotta find a new home for the TV that was hanging from that upper part, so I don't want that. I've got other plans. So there'll be a, another part to our shop transformation. There's gonna be a shelf above these cabinets that extends all the way above the door and will be it's gonna be high enough where that hatch on my toolbox doesn't interfere so whatever that height needs to be so while i've got a mess of materials out i think i'm gonna make that shelf but for now i think i'm gonna go for a ride join me on another video to see how that goes Okay, small update. Our new area is shaping up quite nicely. I've got plywood on the back part of the shelves. Took out a second mortgage and, and bought a sheet of plywood. Which, that wasn't as bad as the uh, half-inch OSB price that I checked out. $40 a sheet at my local Home Depot. I was surprised to see that. I do have a uh, half of a sheet of plywood that from a different project that I'm going to be cutting up to put on these shelves. I have not done that. Once I get that done, that will close out this installment of what's going on in Preston's shop. I do like this area. If I back up and give you the big picture... Use your imagination just a little bit to picture this plywood gone and things cleaned up. I will probably use my rolling table in where that pressure treated is. That pressure treated has to go to a new home. I don't know. That might cut me off or block off access to my toolbox more than I want. But I did like having a, a work surface right there, so... Maybe I'll figure something else out if I don't like that, but the shop is coming along nicely. Still need to rehome the TV. Here's that plywood I'm going to cut up for those other shelves, but I have done some work in here. Not a lot. But as you will recall, this is my bonus shop. I've insulated this wall. I need to run some electric along this wall. Give myself some outlets, insulate all the way around, and a lot of that OSB that's in the uh, other room will go up on this wall. And this is going to be my dirty room. <laughs> it already is my dirty room, but what I mean by that is uh, it will be for sandblasting and painting and things like that. Things that will create dust and dirty processes. More wood that I've got just laying around anybody else have a bunch of wood laying around 
But that's the uh, state of the shop at this moment in time. Uh, if not tonight, then tomorrow morning I'll get those last pieces of shelf uh, screwed in place and do a quick tidy up and end this video. Because I know you guys probably are tired of watching my incremental gains on, on my shop. We'll just pick this up for the fat cat. Not only, sorry, I got sidetracked. Not only is it the manual, but the setup instructions came with it. Pretty excited about that. And there you have it. Till tomorrow. Okay. We have finished our little, uh, shop improvement project so to recap what we did we took a section of shelves right here that came out five feet and we cut them back to one foot made some l-shaped shelves out of them covered them with three quarter inch plywood what i will do is uh go back i'm going to take this bracket out which now that these aren't supported all the way across, they are a little uh, a little flimsy. But I'll take a two by six, and which will come down about here, give it a little angle, make it come all the way out to the edge there and support that. But this offers a lot more organized storage space for parts. That bottom shelf there is tall enough and deep enough where I can fit totes underneath there. And I buy the, the Harbor Freight little dollies. I don't have enough to go around what you see under there. You put a tote on a dolly and it's easily accessed. Everything on wheels. I've got some work to do to clean up the, uh, the wood situation that I've pulled out. I've got other places to put that, but that'll be a project for another day. Stay tuned for those. I've got... She's probably $40,000 worth of OSB there at today's prices to put up in the other room. So thanks for watching. I know that's not a lot of uh, trike information, but it's laying the groundwork to help me be organized with my trike stuff and work on upcoming projects. So I know you might not be as excited as I am for this, but I am certainly excited. So thanks for watching. And we will catch you next time. Have a great night.